Hi guys, here is the next Godot tutorial in which I will add the movement script to the player and also control animations. In the previous one we could move around the sphere, you can see this here. It has a kinematic body as parent node, that worked. What I'm going to do now is to also add a kinematic body to the low poly character and therefore I re-import it and change the root type from spatial to kinematic body. Then I press re-import and open the scene as new inherited so that we can make changes. And here you can see that the parent, the root, is a kinematic body now and we get a warning that I should add a collision shape, what I will do. Okay, and once it is added, I have to define the shape and I select a capsule. Then I rotate it 90 degrees and adjust the size and the position so that it fits the player. Ok, that's good enough, now I save the scene and I will override my existing character DSCN. Then I select the animation player and define my idle loop animation as autoplay so that it will be played on startup. And what I also have to do again is to assign the material to the mesh. Ok, nice, now we can switch back to the main scene. And here I'm going to add a script to the character. Select attach script and I call this character, that's fine. And basically we can go ahead and copy the player script from the previous tutorial into the character script. And when I start the game now, the movement should already work. Yes, but it works for both players, so we can get rid of the sphere now. Ok, so I just removed this and what I'm going to show you now is how to control the animations of the player. First, a simple method. I add a member variable to store the animation player and I get the node in the ready function. Then I introduce a boolean variable to store if the player is currently moving. I initialize it to false and set it to true when there is a user input to move the character. Ok, and now I'm going to set the animation to idle or run depending on the value of the isMoving variable. So I initialize it to idle loop and if is moving is true, I set it to run. Then I get the current animation of the animation player. And then I check if the animation that I want to play now is the current animation, so if it is already running. And if not, I call play for this animation. So here we can see the result when I start the game. I move the player and the animation is changing from idle to run and vice versa, but it is switching abruptly and this looks rather ugly. But I will show you now how to avoid this and to blend these animations. So let's go back here to the editor and the first thing I do is to rename the run animation to run minus loop because we need it as a run cycle. After that I open the character scene 
and add an animation tree player node. With this one you can create an animation tree, add the animations as nodes and blend the animations together. So first I add two animation nodes with the animations idle and run. Ok and after that I add a blend to node, rename it to idle run, then I connect it with the two animation nodes and with the output. As master player I assign the animation player of the character and then I activate the animation tree player. Ok now when I change here the blend amount it should blend between idle and run, but it doesn't. Oh I see I didn't assign here the run loop animation. Ok and now it works, I can blend between idle and run by using this slider. The blend amount has a range from 0 to 1 and the only thing we have to do now is to set this amount in our script to blend between idle and run. And this is also very simple, we can just go back to the script and get rid of all the code that we wrote before, the shortcut for commenting this out is Ctrl K and then we get the animation tree player to set the amount of blending. So I get the animation tree player node here and then I call the function blend to node set amount for our blend to node idle underscore run. And for the amount we have to use the normalized speed of the player, but where to get this speed from? Well we calculated the horizontal velocity which is a vector, a vector has a length and to normalize it I divide it by the maximum speed. So that's it, now let's have a look at the result. Much better. Ok guys, the next steps will be to rotate the player according to the user input and then write a camera follow script. So I really hope you liked the tutorial and my channel and I will make all this stuff available for free for you but keep in mind that this is really fun but also takes a lot of time so please consider supporting me on my Patreon to help this channel grow and to keep all the resources available for free. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and see you soon.